Welcome to the KCM site, Resources for Virtual Math Instruction. This is our new and permanent home. I want to show you around. On the site, you'll notice on our homepage, we have our table of contents. Each of these is a hyperlink that'll take you to a collection of activities. We'll walk through those in a moment. Also on the homepage, we have instructional videos such as this one. We have a list of our recent updates. So we'll keep this updated so as each time you visit, you can quickly see if something has changed or something new has been added and you can find those new resources. As you can see, we're pretty busy and we hope we're providing resources that are useful to you. At the bottom, you'll see my contact information. Love to hear from you. Let us know what's working, but also let us know what questions you have or if you're having any problems or if you have suggestions for additional activities that would serve you and your students. Let's take a look at one of these collections. I'm gonna start with number words and numerals just to give us a sense of how these are laid out. You'll have the heading so you'll know what page you're on. We have a list of icons. These icons are gonna let you navigate between pages. You can go back to that main page where we just were or you could navigate to one of the other collections. Within each collection, you'll see our activities. Each is uh, individually framed and includes uh, an image so you can see what you'll be getting, name of the activity or resource, the type of activity or resource. So if it's a Google slide deck or a Jamboard uh, or possibly something else, you'll know exactly what you're getting. And then you have a link to getting the resource. A very brief descriptor, Often we have vid video tutorials that'll show you how to use the activity, what kind of questions to be asking students, what is the purpose. Uh, so these video tutorials are primarily focused on the mathematics and the instructional side. One of the new additions is we now have a link that'll take you back to this page to make it easy for you to either bookmark a particular resource or share it with another teacher. We also continue to have our last revised date, so you'll know if something has been newly added or changed. Let me go ahead and give you an example of how that copy link works, because I'm very excited about that feature. Suppose you wanna let another teacher know that there is a Jamboard with virtual arrow cards. And so you can copy that link, um, or you could even bookmark that link. And I'll show you what happens. If I type in that link on a new page, it takes me to this page, and in particular, it takes me to the row that has that activity. So you would need to make sure you communicate which of the activities, because there'll be three or four activities in that row. Uh, and so you could say, hey, check out this arrow cards resource, here's the link, and it'll pop up and it'll be one of the activities in the row. Now it could be the third or fourth item in the row, um, but you know it'll be visible on the page that they get to. In terms of getting to the resources, uh, if you've used our site through the fall, you'll be familiar with this. You click on the link and it's gonna prompt you to make a copy. This is true for pretty much any of the resources. And the idea here is that you're gonna become owner of that Google slide deck or that Google Jamboard. And that's gonna let you edit it, uh, share it with your students, um, make it something that's useful for you. The file name will become copy of, whatever the file name was. Uh, and then you have that Jamboard with those pages and that resource. Um, but I'll show here up in the share section, you can see that um, now I'm the only owner of this copy. We have another resource that talks through how to use um, the share features to connect students to those files to get them on so that they can use them. So I encourage you to check out those resources if you have questions about that. Let's go ahead and go back to our site. These navigation icons, if you float over them, the title of that resource will pop up. So you don't have to remember the icons, but we hope that the icons will be just something that becomes very natural and quick uh, and comfortable for you to navigate between these resources. Again, you can just always go back to our homepage and you have the full listing. Taking a look at the kind of content that you'll see in each section. In number words and numerals, we are focused in on sequencing numbers, reading numbers, rote counting with numbers, primarily within 100. We have lots of um, strips where kids can be working on short counting sequences, 
thinking about before and after. Uh, one of my favorite activities, discriminating numerals, is about uh, helping kids reconcile problems where they have specific confusions. Uh, we often see kids reading a 12 as 21 or 21 as 12 and vice versa. And we found that they um, aren't quite aware that those numbers are different. They know there's a one and a two, but not necessarily that the order matters. So one of our favorite activities is this discriminating numerals where kids just pay attention to the physical structure of the numbers and sort those number cards and recognize how this thing, this 12 is different than this 21. So that's one of my favorite activities. We have some uh, 100 chart resources, both what I think of as traditional from one to 100, um, but also at a teacher's request, we had the reversed 120 chart and so that one starts at the bottom and works upward. And then one of my favorite jam boards is the arrow cards. So you can see this collection is primarily focused on numerals. As we move into the second one here, a uh, bank is um, about cardinality. It's about the kindergarten and early first grade skills of counting by ones, counting collections, counting visible items. Um, we have a little bit of thinking about counting when I can't see items, thinking about screening, but primarily we're expecting strategies here where kids are counting, counting by ones. And so a, a small collection of activities to support that. If you're looking for addition and subtraction more generally, especially more fluent strategies, we want students to be using their combinations of five and 10, to be bridging through a 10, to be developing knowledge of doubles and using that to think about near doubles. Those are gonna live in our structuring within five, 10 and 20 page. If you're wanting kids to develop addition subtraction strategies using place value, uh, thinking about the tens inside of a number, those are gonna be in our conceptual place value and multi-digit addition and subtraction collections. So you can see the 10 frame there is a reminder that these are structuring activities and what we mean by that is we want kids to be anchoring to the five, anchoring to the 10, or developing doubles, or using known facts, or bridging through 10. And so we have a bank of activities to support that. And you can see that's more robust than the, the coast counting and cardinality activity. So I encourage you to check these out if you're looking for addition, subtraction resources. Um, you know, working with 10 frames and pairs of 10 frames, thinking about doubles, thinking about taking away from a 10 frames of subtraction. Um, we have all sorts of resources in here to support that. Going back to the top of our page, we have that 100 bead rack to bring up the idea of working with place value, using the tens inside of a number to add and subtract. Much of this is within 100, a little bit extends to, uh, to 1,000 but primarily the, the idea here is kids are paying attention to the tens and using that for their addition strategies. We have a um, pretty nice collection of multiplication activities with lots of equal group imagery, array imagery, uh, recording tools, very simple but useful 10 by 10 array there that you can draw on and uh, partition those arrays and develop those strategies. Uh, some matching activities that students could play in partners or even independently, some skip counting sequences. Uh, and so you'll find your multiplication resources here. Here's our bank of fraction activities. We hope to add to that. But we have some Cuisinaire rod work here that we think is really powerful, um, particular Cuisinaire rods relating to number lines. So although it's few, there's some of my favorite resources for uh, connecting uh, fractions to number lines. We have seasonal activities. Right now we only have winter, but we'll be expanding that to have some Valentine's Day activities, uh, some spring activities. So this will be a place where we'll continue to grow and add. Um, but I do, uh, we do have some of these winter themed games that continue to be very appropriate. There are some amazing resources out there created by others, uh, some apps and banks 
And uh, where we find those, we post those. So feel free to share with us some of your favorite resources and we'll add these to our page. And last but not least, I'm gonna come back here to our customizable games and templates because we know we can't think of everything. We know that there are things you wanna do with your students. You have specific topics, specific ranges. Uh, and we've tried to build for you some resources that'll let you customize for your students. Um, for instance, you can make a move it game where you can edit the game board and edit the game cards. And um, you could have students work on before, after, doubling, adding 10, um, really the sky's the limit. Anything you want them to do, you can set up your game to do that. Similar, we have a tic-tac-toe, you added the cards and the board. We use the replace all feature in Google Slide Deck to make that editing process fairly efficient. Um, also, we love jam boards. We know that they're great. We know your classrooms, you probably have favorite game boards and activities. Uh, and we talk through on these and provide some basic resources, the dice and the game pawns uh, to let you adapt some of those activities that you are used to using and get a virtual version that your students can use. So here's our bank of customizable and uh, hopefully that, that gives you the tools to meet exactly those needs that you have for your students. So that's just a quick introduction to our resources for virtual math instruction. Hope you have a sense of how we have it organized. We know there's a lot on there. Uh, if you have any suggestions or ideas, we'd love to hear from you. My contact information is the bottom of that homepage. And so please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much.